I've spent a lot of my life in business parks. I used to work in tech, before it was cool. And back then, tech companies weren't exactly set up in shiny offices downtown. They were in the cheapest office space available. And that usually meant working in some crappy business park by the airport. My jobs required a lot of business travel as well, so I've been to a lot of crappy business parks all over the US and Canada. So the other day when I needed to go to an appointment in a business park by the airport, I knew what to expect, at least I thought I did. I'm not gonna share which company I was visiting with you internet weirdos, that's none of your damn business, but let's pretend it was this FedEx building. This was not like the business parks I was used to. The most unusual thing for me was that it was actually trivially easy for me to get there by public transportation. I rode my bike to the nearest station, parked in the underground parking garage, and walked to the train platforms. I could have waited for a direct train to my destination, but trains come so often here that it was just faster to take the first train going to the airport. I didn't even need to wait two minutes. Then at Schiphol Airport, I transferred to another train. And again, I didn't even need to wait two minutes. After that, it was a short, pleasant walk to the office building. As somebody taking public transit, this is a drastically different experience than any North American business park I've ever been to, and that's an understatement. Let me explain. A long time ago in a suburb far, far away, I used to work in this building in a crappy business park by the Toronto airport. It kind of sucked, the job and the location. I stole this mug from them before I left because it had the perfect corporate BS mission statement. It says, continuously improving customer satisfaction. I bet the management committee worked really, really hard to come up with that one. The office was here, and I was living in a shared house with some roommates on the other side of the airport here, about 10 kilometers away as the crow flies. Which would have been fine, except that I was a poor student, so I had to take the bus, and it was just so bad. I had two choices for my commute. The first was two buses, which were scheduled to come every 20 minutes in rush hour. But these were suburban buses that would constantly get stuck in traffic, so the schedule was absolutely meaningless. I could easily end up standing in the cold by this bus stop for over half an hour waiting for my transfer. And I had to cross two legs of this nasty suburban intersection between bus stops too. Going this way, my typical commute door to door was anywhere from about 50 minutes to over an hour depending on the transfer in traffic. Of course, if I had a car, the trip probably would have taken me around half an hour in traffic, so the whole commute could have been shorter sometimes than just waiting for that bus connection. So I opted for a second option, which was only one bus. But this was the actual route it took, two loops through the airport and out the other side. Going this way took me about an hour and 10 minutes door to door, but at least I didn't have to stand out in the cold waiting for a transfer. When I got to my destination, the bus dropped me off here, at the side of this six lane strode. It's an absolutely miserable place to be outside of a car. I would then walk down the sidewalk next to the high speed motor traffic. Then I'd cross through the grass here and go in through the back door. There were constant problems and delays with my commute, but if I ever complained about it at work, the people there would usually just tell me I should grow up and buy a car. I resisted telling them they didn't pay me enough to afford a car in the first place. At the time, I didn't think much of this. I was a student and I didn't have much money, so I had to take the bus along with all the other desperate people who couldn't afford a car. And I was born and raised in a car-infested city, so being surrounded by a constant stream of motor vehicles and wide suburban strodes didn't really seem out of the ordinary. But when I think back on it, knowing what I know today, it was disgraceful. It's absolutely disgusting how public transit users are treated in North America. And to be clear, this is in the suburbs of Toronto, which by North American standards have good public transportation. A lot of places in the U.S. are much, much worse than this. 
At least here, I had a sidewalk. But I can't even express how different that experience was to this place in the Netherlands, which is also a business park by the airport. This place in Mississauga is designed for cars and everything else is an afterthought at best. You are simply not welcome here if you're not driving. But this is a place designed for people, a place that is comfortable and inviting to be in. It allows people to drive here too, but it's clearly not the only way to get here or even the preferred way to get here. And that makes a huge difference. After my meeting, I spent over an hour and a half wandering around this place and it seemed every time I turned a corner, there was something else that amazed me. And that's kind of crazy considering, you know, it's a business park by the airport. In North America, I was always a second class citizen as a transit rider. Transit was an afterthought overlaid on top of the extensive car infrastructure. But here, transit is prioritized as a first-class mode of transportation. This business park is a very easy walk from a train station with frequent service, and you're not stuck on a narrow sidewalk along a high-speed strode. These buses aren't stuck in traffic behind a bunch of cars on a suburban arterial road. They have their own completely separate road of their own. And it's raised up above the road for cars here so that it doesn't even need to stop at any traffic lights. This lets buses run regularly and reliably, and buses were arriving every few minutes as I was filming. And keep in mind, this was on a Tuesday early in the afternoon, not at rush hour. The bus stop itself is spacious and comfortable with stairs and an elevator down to ground level. This is what first-class transit infrastructure looks like. In this business park, transit is prioritized. This place is built around public transit not just for cars. The designers of this place want people to arrive here by transit and they make it comfortable and convenient to do so. This traffic light was great too. First, it goes green for this bus. Most Dutch intersections have priority for public transit. If a public transit vehicle arrives, it always gets to go through and everybody else has to wait, which makes sense because there are usually several dozen people on a transit vehicle. After a moment, the next priority is given to people walking and cycling. Because the system detected pedestrians here, the traffic light turned green to let them cross while keeping the light red for all drivers to avoid any conflict between cars and people walking. Then the light turns green for these cars so that they can enter the roundabout. As the last car passes the stop line, the light turns red to allow other traffic to pass. But then the traffic control system detects another car approaching, so it turns green again and early enough that the approaching car doesn't need to stop. Then immediately after the car passes, it turns red again. This is a great example of how Dutch intersections allow short wait times or even no wait times for drivers while also prioritizing cycling and public transit. It really is better for everyone. And over here, at this part of the junction, the light is always green for pedestrians unless a car or transit vehicle is detected. So when I cross here, I don't need to press any buttons, I don't need to wait, and I don't need to cross six lanes of car traffic either. I just keep walking safely and conveniently to the train station nearby. The other thing that amazed me is just how nice this place is, which makes it really enjoyable to walk. Which is why there were more people out here walking, even on this miserable rainy day, than you'd ever see in a business park in Canada, even in good weather. Canada does an okay job of making it theoretically possible to walk, as they are usually sidewalks, but it's definitely not enjoyable to walk, and most people will avoid walking in suburbia unless they're forced to. Notice here that every office is located next to the sidewalk, not across a sea of parking, and the pedestrian entrances are wide and comfortable. It's more pleasant to approach this building as a pedestrian than a driver. Okay, so the garden is probably nicer in summer, but you get the idea. The weather sucks here, but everything else is pretty great. And look at how easy it is to cross the road here. This is not a strode like you'd find in North America. It's split into two sections of two narrow lanes in each direction with a grassy median in between. This means that as a pedestrian, I only need to look in one direction at a time to find a gap in traffic. 
There's no traffic light required, no expensive infrastructure. I just wait until it's safe to cross. I can't do this across a six lane strode. Then there's a nice pedestrian bridge and a bicycle path that I need to cross. And then I get immediate access to the building without needing to go through any parking lots. Cars are still welcome here. This is actually pretty car centric by Dutch standards. I mean, there's more than one lane for cars in each direction, which is pretty rare to see here. But the parking is all underground, tucked under the buildings, and it isn't an inconvenience or a safety hazard to pedestrians. The buildings here actually have interesting architecture too. They're not all a bunch of single-story concrete rectangles. There are loading bays for the businesses here, as you'd expect in a business park. But right next to it is the entrance to a parking garage for bicycles. I also appreciate how the water management infrastructure takes the form of attractive canals rather than an ugly stormwater pond next to a freeway. In general, it's just really nice here. People spend a lot of time where they work, and it's important that those places are nice for our own sanity. Let's face it, this place is ugly, really ugly. Nobody wants to be here. Getting here is a necessary evil that people put up with. It's bad enough sitting in a tiny cubicle, staring at a computer screen, filling out useless forms and listening to eight different bosses drone on about mission statements without also being surrounded by soul-crushing asphalt and concrete every time you step outside. Nobody gets any joy from being here, even the people in cars. Nothing about this place is good. And here it is over 20 years later, and this place still sucks, which is why I was able to get this video of it. To be fair, the buses are more frequent than they were in my day, but they're still stuck in traffic and still take the same circuitous routes. And now they've even put up a fence around the building I used to work in, so walking from the bus stop is even worse today than it was when I worked there. I actually got angry coming to this business park, thinking about all those years of my life wasted away on those crappy buses stuck in traffic, the long cold walks down the side of an awful suburban six lane strode, getting cut off by drivers when crossing the road and constantly feeling like a second-class citizen. And I didn't even talk about the amazing bicycle infrastructure that is literally everywhere around this area. Or the park-and-ride garage that makes it easy for people in the suburbs to come into the city without driving. And I don't mean to imply that every business park in the Netherlands is always going to be this good. But even remote industrial parks have high-quality cycling infrastructure. I just, I, I don't know how to express this feeling to people who have never experienced both places. Europeans are going to look at this and think, okay, so you took a train to a business park, big deal. And North Americans are going to look at this and think, there's a sidewalk and a bus shelter. What are you complaining about? Or more likely, oh, just shut up and get a car. But it's not any one of these elements. It's all of these things together. It's the high quality public transportation that's clean and well maintained and so frequent that you don't even need to look at a schedule. It's the airport that's not just another destination, but a major transportation hub with trains leaving every few minutes. It's, it's the single payment card that can be used on all transportation systems in the entire country. It's the respect that's given to transit users and the enjoyable experience for pedestrians. It's, sidewalks with other people on them, not just me next to a constant flow of cars. It's the options that are provided for walking, cycling, and public transit. It's the freedom to not to have to drive. And you know what? It's when the people you're meeting ask how you got there and they don't look down on you for taking public transportation. In fact, they're relieved because then they didn't have to sort out visitor parking. It's the respect, the consideration, being treated every bit as good as everybody else, regardless of the way you got to the office. And that is something that just doesn't exist in most of North America. And let's face it, large parts of the US and Canada suck. They're non-places, dysfunctional, insolvent, and ugly. If all of the jobs moved out of here and this place disappeared tomorrow, nobody would even care. 
But it doesn't have to be this way. I've seen the alternatives. Cities built for people, not just for cars. If we design our cities differently, it is possible to make places that don't suck. Places where you'd actually want to be. And yeah, even a business park by the airport. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay me to get irrationally angry, no, rationally angry about business parks. If you'd like to support the channel and allow me to wander around with a camera in other ridiculous places, visit patreon.com slash notjustbikes.